I just say XD. Did he put it into? Don't. If you can course. disarm one of them, huh? Don't think they're called coursers. Oh, I just hit a quad feed. Let's go. Guy ran. One. That would have made this more Two. enjoyable. And Kalat headshot for the third and fourth. Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Sorry in Advance, and today I got a brand new video for you guys. This one is coming to you on Call of Duty. It is a 24 and 1 gameplay on the map Gustav Cannon, which seems to be everybody's least favorite map, but I mean, I, I, I like it. It's a good map. I can do gameplays like this, so I mean, it, it's not terrible for me, alright? Anyway, the topic of today's video is going to be the loot drops or the supply drops within Call of Duty as well as within Destiny and the reason I enjoy Call of Duty's supply drops more. So that being said, let's get a small history on it within this game as well as within Destiny 2 and we will kind of see where they're both coming from and which system is better based on that. So Call of Duty in first introduced their supply drops in Advanced Warfare, introducing variant weapons that did more damage and changed the stats of the weapons significantly, making weapons like the BAL, Obsidian Steed, extremely powerful and basically the best weapon in the game. Now this was unfortunate because not too many people could get the weapon, and the people that could get the weapon were oftentimes paying hundreds of dollars to get that certain weapon. Now, after a couple of years, they've more or less perfected their supply drop system, taking variant weapons out entirely, and instead putting more camos and cosmetic items within them. Now, Black Ops 3 was the next game after Advanced Warfare to have supply drops, and that game introduced weapons instead of weapon variants. Now, this was still pretty controversial within the community, especially since you couldn't earn any of the weapons, and you still had to get them in supply drops. This meant that the FFAR in Black Ops 3 was one of the most powerful assault rifles within the game, and similar to the Obsidian Steed, could only be gotten from purchased supply drops or earned supply drops, meaning that many of the people that had these weapons paid hundreds of dollars to do so. Infinite Warfare is, in my opinion, the turning point for Call of Duty supply drops, and where I started to care a little bit less because they're handled a lot better now. In Infinite Warfare, you also had a contract alongside the supply drop. And if you completed this contract, which was about 50 wins or so within the multiplayer, you would get a new weapon. One of the weapons that was only available within the supply drop, and now you had because you did an extra long quest that not everyone's gonna do. This still gives the company a lot of money, unfortunately, and I still think that supply drops aren't a good business practice in general, but I digress, and I mean, we're still seeing it. However, in World War II, I think it's done the best. We have variant weapons that don't change your stats. All they do is change the XP gain that you get. And in World War II, they are now introducing weapons with contracts again. I am still fine with that, and I feel like the heroic weapons that we get are cool. They look amazing, and they are by far the most wanted guns in the game, which is interesting because they don't do anything extra for you besides what they already did in their base weapon. Now, Destiny 2 also has supply drops, and Destiny 2 is a game that I feel should not have supply drops. It's a RPG open-world looter game based on getting cool-looking loot from different enemies and bosses within the game. Now, unfortunately, where Destiny kind of falls off the ladder in this, uh, this 
age of supply drops is the fact that in order to continue playing an RPG looter shooter game like Borderlands or Destiny 2, you have to want something and you have to know where you want it from. That has to be hard enough to get, but powerful enough to want and continue using after you have received the item. In Destiny 2, especially within the Curse of Osiris expansion released December 8th, I don't see that enjoyment of getting gear. Unfortunately, the best looking gear in the game is offered from Eververse, who is the microtransaction dealer, or like NPC. Which is honestly just frustrating, and I don't know what Bungie was thinking when they decided to implement that. And it honestly saddens me because I have a feeling that most of the good content we're going to want within Destiny 2, especially over the next couple years, is basically only going to be microtransactions, and if you want good gear, it's going to be grinding for a bright engram. So with that being said, Call of Duty definitely handles their microtransactions better. They've had a couple more years to develop this system, and quite frankly, Destiny 2 just isn't there yet. They will be one day, but they're not. And for that reason, I'm going to be playing a lot more Call of Duty. I'm going to stop supporting Destiny 2 as much. But that's just my opinion on it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.